So in today's lecture, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Expression Blend. So Blend has been around for a while, and they've constantly been integrating Blend features into Visual Studios, but there are still some helpful features in Blend. Um, so let's kind of get into it here. So Blend is just really a tool used for user interface, kind of make things pretty, to, uh, to bind things together, to create animations, to create themes, um, those nature of things. So it's going to look slightly different than Visual Studio, but fairly close. It's pretty easy to navigate and work through. So you'll notice over here on the left, we've got this Assets window, kind of like our toolbox where we can select all of our different things. We can even select things like styles and behaviors and shapes. We've got effects and things like that. But for our purpose, we're just mainly going to be using these. I'm actually going to go ahead and close this down for our assets because over here, they're, they're all along here, the left here. I can actually right click on them and choose the different controls that I want to. So from there, let's just actually go ahead and let's add a button onto our window here. And so now we've added our button. And just like Visual Studio, you can look at the XAML, you can look at the code behind the scenes, etc., etc. So it should all be very fam familiar to you there. The properties should all look extremely similar. Some of the things that uh, Visual Studio does have a little bit more of is we'll talk about like objects and timelines and, and a few other things uh, as we get there. But for now, let's talk about Visual Studio and some of the things that can really be helpful. And first thing I want to talk about is styles. Um, so in styles, what we can do is they're kind of like HTML style sheets. They're the CSS files. And what we can do is we can create a style and then apply it to as many controls as we would like. So for example, if we make a button, we make it look exactly like we want, we can then apply that style to all of our other buttons. So what we can actually do is let's drag a button on here, then we can come up to the top and click Format, Edit Style, Edit a Copy. And so what this is actually doing is, is that in WPF, all of the controls are what are called lookless until they have a default template and a default style applied to them. And so we're going to edit that default style that was already applied to the button. And so what it's going to do is it's going to ask us, hey, we're going to make a copy of this style. What do you want to call it? And we'll just call it button style one. Click OK. And now you'll notice that I'm kind of in this style mode here. I'm not messing with the button anymore. So what I could do is I could come in here and if I want to, I could just reset this. Let's say I want to make this red and maybe I want the text to be a font of, you know, 22. Now again, I could set all kinds of properties here, but I think you kind of get the idea. So I'm saying this is what I want my style to be. I can then click this little button up here and it'll actually take me back to my window view. So now I'm back to my normal editing mode. But if I come into my XAML, you'll see that for my button, it's applied this style to it. So let's go at the top and take a look at button style one. So under my Windows resources, it created all of these resources for me that are actually used in this button style one resource. And so you can see the Tarbic type is a button and here's all the normal or the default style applied, including the template here. I'm gonna minimize that just so we can kind of see the style a little bit easier. And so here, for example, are the additional properties that I set for my button. So now what we can do is we could come over here and we could add another button. And in order to make it look the same, to apply the same style, we could right click on it, edit template, apply resource, button style one. And so when I click that, you can now see that both my buttons look exactly the same. Now I can come in here and I can edit this button and, uh, and sort of add on properties to it. Or what I could do is let me delete this. And let's say we want every button on our window to have the same style automatically. So here's a button, here's another button. And let's say we want those styles applied automatically. If we scroll back to the top here and I just delete X key button style one, I delete that there. What that says is I want that style applied to all of my buttons on my window. And so that's how we can do that. So now in between each of these little parts of the lecture, I'm just going to kind of keep cleaning up the code so we don't get confused on which pieces we just created. So go ahead and save that, come back to our designer, and we can start fresh again. So the next thing I want to talk about is templates. So we just talked about the styles, but now let's talk about the template of my button. And so I can kind of do the same thing where I right click, edit template, and now I'm going to edit a copy. So I'm not editing the style, I'm editing the template itself. We'll call it button style one again. 
click OK, and now you can see that I'm in this kind of template editing mode. And I'm also going to bring up here to my um, objects and timeline. And you can see inside my button style one, what makes up a button is a border with a content presenter inside of it. If I go into my XAML, make this then come up here, you can see that here's that style again, that button style one, but now we're editing this template property. And we can see right here, let me minimize this a little bit, you can see that I'm actually setting anything I want inside my template, including all these triggers that happen automatically for us. So these triggers, what they're showing in XAML is that, okay, I can trigger, for instance, is mouse over? And so it sets these properties when it's pressed or is it enable? So it's setting these triggers for us automatically. I'm going to go ahead and just delete those out. And then for my button itself, for my template, I'm going to delete this. So I'm going to completely define what I want my button to look like. And this is where your imagination, your creativity have to come in. So what kind of a button are you trying to create for your application? So let's say you're creating it for a dentist office and you wanted this button to look like a tooth, for example. Well, I could do that. I could then write my XAML to create you know, images and, and paths so I look like some kind of tooth for this application or whatever that is. And so I'm going to create just some sample code here. I'll just paste this in here. I'm going to create a grid that has an ellipse in it, just a red ellipse, and then a content presenter where I can you know, show the actual um, this right here, where it's my content presenter. So I can show like a text, an example. But now you can see here that I've created a button that looks nothing essentially like a normal button, but it can act like a button. And we could do the same thing like we did before, where I can take my other button and apply it here, and then I can apply that resource to that button. And so now all my buttons look completely different, but again, I can click on them, I can come over here to the events, I can add click events, and now I've got my special button. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Let's come back to our XAML, delete all of our Windows resources, go ahead and save that, come back to our designer. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's talk about storyboards. So storyboards are a way that we can do animations in our XAML. And this is where uh, Blend really comes in handy. So let's just use another button because that's a simple control to do. So I'm going to drag my button on here. Now down here in my objects and timeline, I'm going to add a new storyboard. We'll just call it storyboard one. That's fine. Click OK. Now we're in this record mode. You can see storyboard one timeline recording is on. Now down here, we always want to start our storyboard by adding a keyframe right here at the beginning. So I do that by adding this keyframe. Now let's go to 500 milliseconds and now let's begin our animation. So we can do anything we want and we can actually just do it up here. So if I drag it down, that says at 500 milliseconds, move the button down. Over you know, around one second, let's go ahead and say that we want to now spin our button around so we can do that. And now at like half a second, let's come over here to our properties and change the background of our button. Again, we could do anything we want to change any properties. We could move it. But now I'm going to play this right here and just kind of show you our animation. And so there goes our animation. So the problem now is, is how do we actually apply this animation to our button? So what we can do is let's come over to our button now. So let's go out of our storyboard and so we'll just stop our recording and now in our button let's come over here to our events and let's double click this right here create a button click event and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna add some code here that's gonna start our storyboard for us now this storyboard class is gonna require us to create a using statement which it should pop up and help us fix there it goes so we'll just add this using directive at the top. And so what this is doing, it says, hey, get my storyboard from a resource. So we're saying, find the resource storyboard behind our window. We know it's a storyboard, so let's cast it to that, because this is going to return an object type. And then begin our storyboard animation. So before we do that, let's come back over to our XAML. And let's look what actually got created for us. So under our Windows resources, you can see it created our storyboard one. Now, Everything that you're seeing here, remember, is actually created behind the scenes for us in C-sharp.
So storyboard is just a class. So we could, in our code, say storyboard equal, you know, storyboard, my storyboard equals a new storyboard. And then we could add these keyframe animations to it. For example, double animation using keyframes is just another class that we're going to target our button. And we can see here's this target our property. And so we're transforming the Y of it. And so that's where we're just moving the button down a little bit. And then again, we can transform our backgrounds and our other properties all within our storyboard. So now let's go ahead and run the code. And when this comes up, now when I click the button, it's going to start that storyboard. And you can see it animates that. It looks like I've kind of messed up the, the code there, but you kind of get the idea of you know, how it's going to look and, and run. And so that's storyboards. So let's go ahead and delete this now. I'm going to delete my storyboard back here. And then also delete my code. Just clean everything up. Go ahead and save that. Come back to our XAML. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create a little sample application now where it looks a lot like our data binding example that we've seen before. And so this will, this will look familiar to you once we uh, add it a little bit here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little sample list box. Now you'll notice it actually has some data by default. So I'm going to come into my XAML here and I'm going to delete my item sources here. Come back to my design and now I've got my list box. So I'm just going to right click on here and do add list box item and maybe add another list box item to it. Now for each of these list box items I'm going to come back over to my code come down to the content property and I'm going to change this to red. And I'm going to change this to green. So this should look kind of familiar that what we've done before. And now I'm going to actually put down a text box right below this. And so now I'm going to bind these two together like we've done in the past. So first we're going to do is we're going to click on our text box and what we want to do is we want to bind the text property of our text box to the selected content of our list box. So what we can do that, let's come down to our text. Actually, let me do it this way, it's a little bit easier. So if I do the names and I come down to the content, oh, it's still selected. Okay. All right. So I'm going to click this little button right here called data binding dialog for our text box. So now when we do that, we're going to come over here. Now you can see the text box is the current one highlighted. What we're actually going to do is we're going to click on the list box. And then I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to select selected item. So what I'm saying is I want to bind my text property to the list boxes selected item. If I open up the more settings down here, we can see that here's our default binding direction. And so we could select one way or two way, whatever we want to do. And then you can see that, so if let's do one way, for example. Um, and so we could actually click OK. And so now what that's going to do is it's going to bind the text of our text box to whichever item is selected here. But now let's also do that for our background. So if I scroll up here to our background property, I'm going to do the same thing. And so now I'm going to come up here to our list box. I'm going to scroll down. And now you'll notice that selected item isn't here. I have to uncheck this little checkbox here, only display matching types. I'll do selected item. Come back to more settings. And you can see that now for this one, I'm actually going to do two way. And then I'm going to say property changed. And click OK. Now let's go into our XAML here and see what it created for us. So here's our text box. And here's our text, and we're saying we want to bind it, the selected item. And what we actually want to do is we want to actually want to update this to selected item dot content, because we're saying we're binding the selected item dot content to our list box, and then come over here, selected item dot content. For our background, we're saying bind the background to that selected item dot content of our list box two way. So now if I run this. It should look a lot like our other example where I, you can see, let's move that a little bit. For some reason it keeps doing something visually on our designer here. So let me run this again. And so you can see that that's 
messing up again. Let me move it over. Let me move it. Come on. I don't know why it's doing that, but again, that's blend for you. Okay. We'll just hard code that to be a little bit bigger. See if that helps us out. Okay, there we go. So you can see now we got red. See how it's bound? Now it's two-way, so I can come in here and I can change that. Ooh, I must have messed something up, but nonetheless, that's kind of the idea of that, that two-way binding that you've seen before. Again, I won't take the time to fix it because we've seen it in the past, so I'll just kind of move on here. So now, for our WPF themes, this is a new concept where what we can do is we can theme our entire application. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to open up my web browser, and I'm going to go to GitHub, and in this GitHub, this WPF themes, you can download this if you just go to code and download zip. And this is a sample project in Visual Studio that's going to allow us to do it, what they do. They've created this project and it has all these various themes created for us. So what are themes? Well, let's take a look. So I'm going to run this example program that we got for free. So Microsoft has created all of these themes for us. So this is called Expression Dark. So notice how all of my controls have a theme applied to them. Now let's do Shiny Blue. So you can see just with a click of a button, I can completely theme my entire application. So it's the same application, it just has different themes applied to us. And so in this project, if we come over here, you can see that there's the themes project and then the demo. I was just looking at the demo project here. But under the themes, here's all the different themes that they give us. And so they've themed every single control. So now we come back over to my application. I'm going to right click and do add an existing item. Now it, let's go to my default, go back to my class here, do files for students, example programs come down here to WPF themes, WPF themes, and let's do something like this blue right here. Show all files, and then here's this theme.xaml. Go ahead and click add. And so this just adds this theme into my application. But let's say I want this to apply this theme to all buttons and, and things like that. So let's just add some controls here. Let's add um, maybe um, button, combo box, and that should be good for right now. But you'll notice that again, our code, it looks like just regular control. So if we want a theme applied to our entire application, we can come to our app.xaml file, and I can add in one line of code, and that's this, where I'm going to say add a resource dictionary. So it's sort of like saying, hey, I want to, th this resource over here that I just add, this theme.xaml, I want to add that into memory. I I'm going to add this resource so I can use it for the rest of my application. Now, when I come back over here, you'll notice that it automatically applied that theme. So with one line of code, your entire application could be themed. It could look a lot more um, professional. And so this is something I do a lot in the real world where I don't worry about how my application looks. So I don't spend a lot of time in my XAML, you know, making buttons look pretty and various things like that. So you'll notice that I've added nothing as far as how my application should look. I've just applied a single theme to it. So that's kind of the gist of uh, Microsoft Expression Blend. Hope you find it helpful.